Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. I'm going to kick this video off discussing the 3D stacked Ryzen chips, which AMD announced at Computex. Basically, they have clarified further details about these products. And long story short, they will actually be products which get released. And the target release date does seem to be Q1. In a call with Anantec, I'll link the appropriate article in the video description, they mentioned that the mass production of these chips will actually be taking place at the end of this year, although they're not talking about anything other than Ryzen processors, so nothing mentioned about Epic. And this does bring several questions to the table. The first is, well, what will we see in terms of the um, support for these processors? Will it be, for example, 500 series boards only? And furthermore, the IPC gains, well, they seem to be pretty darn good. We saw 10 to 15% uh, being advertised by AMD, and this seems to bear fruit given the results of uh, Gears 5 and other benchmarks that AMD showing off. And this was, of course, a 5900X versus this 3D stacked 5900X with the clock frequency locked to 4 gigahertz. So that is well, 10 to 15% is essentially what you would expect from an architectural jump. So, for example, Zen 2 to Zen 3 or Zen 3 to Zen 4, it's roughly within that kind of ballpark. So, if AMD are releasing these processors in Q1, there is a ton of questions which kind of, well, come to the surface. The first is, is this going to delay the release date of a Zen 4. We'll get into that one in just a second because that's a whole thing. But furthermore, what will be the pricing of these chips? Obviously, we can expect AMD to put a pretty premium on the pricing scheme. But in terms of Halo products, I, I do feel that they are, and I don't want to use this term in the way it's probably going to come across, but these chips to me seem a little bit like Fury X. Do you remember that processor? Or GPU, excuse me. How it was kind of a proof of pro uh, concept processor which got released to the market. The other question is, are these processors Warhol? Um, and yeah, there was like that whole thing of Warhol being cancelled and not being released. And I did indeed hear that Warhol had been cancelled but was a real product. But I don't know if we're ever going to really officially hear whether it is a real processor, uh, sorry, whether Warhol was a real processor and whether it's it, you know, at, at least in the official capacity. But I am extremely interested to see how AMD goes about marketing these CPUs. A couple of other notes as well from the call with Anantec. It seems to be said that the uh, way that the die is stacked, it's not over processor hotspots, so you don't need to concern yourself, for example, for drastically increasing the thermals of the processor and furthermore you're not going to essentially get a runaway effect where the heat cannot dissipate from let's say the the warmer areas of the cpu die but let's move back to the other obvious question what about the release date for zen 4 personally i'm in the camp of q3 q4 for zen 4 kind of rhymed um, just by looking at AMD's previous release schedule for the other processors and also I don't know if they need to rush the release date of Zen 3 then again Alder Lake I do think is going to take the single thread crown but how the nature of this stack to die is going to affect single thread performance and of course also how applications will benefit when they're further optimized for this additional cache no one really knows that. I don't think AMD really need to rush themselves. It's also possible that AMD wish to prolong the life of um, Zen 3 so that they can transition and push server-based processors out to the market so they can kind of have some products on 5NM and some products on 7NM. But honestly, I'm basing this on, well, kind of guesswork on my part, quite frankly. It's going to be very interesting to see how this comes to pass because I heard the RDNA uh, 3 is going to launch in the first half of next year. I wonder if that's been delayed any. I heard it was a pretty solid release date, so perhaps this would be part of that, or I guess it wouldn't be. It would probably release prior to RDNA 3, and AMD, I guess, would slowly trickle out the products. It's way too early to know, honestly. It's going to be very interesting to see how AMD does decide to market this product in the grand scheme of things, and I 
am very curious to see what the support is like on the motherboards because it almost certainly does seem to be of course AM4 because there's no need for them to shift to AM5 and as I mentioned recently you know an AIB or rather a motherboard vendor is telling me that you know not only is most of the stuff for AM5 true but uh, there could be some very interesting surprises there but we'll talk about that another time. Now shifting to other surprises Another very cool thing that was de demoed by AMD at Computex was actually FSR. I don't think I need to introduce what FSR is at this point because everyone and their grandmother knows about Fidelity FX Super Resolution. I have to say that it's not very easy to kind of say the whole thing. Then again, I guess it's better than deep learning super sampling. Anyway, point being that there has been a very interesting Twitter exchange between Kyle Bennett and also Raj Akhodori. Now, I believe that Kyle used to work over at Intel. I don't know how long he was there for, but um, I know obviously Raj Akhodori is uh, working over at Intel. And it's a very interesting exchange. You can read it on screen yourself. And long story short, uh, basically Kyle was pushing for FSR to, well, be a thing for Intel. Now, clearly, AMD can brute force this, like they probably didn't have NVIDIA working with them when they showed off the GTX 1060 stuff, but if Intel adopts this standard as well for upsampling, it could mean some very interesting questions going forward, particularly for the implementation of uh, upsampling just in general with games, because obviously Intel are not a major GPU player for the discrete market yet, but come on guys, it's Intel. If Intel embraces standard, there's a good chance that it's going to become a thing. This is not to say that it will, but again, two big companies pushing something are better than one. And AMD and Intel working together on this would be kind of funny, especially given Raja himself, of course, used to head up um, Radeon Technologies Group. But I would be very interested to see about this and also the way Raja's phrasing the um you know the strengths of intel xc is also quite telling and speaking of raja raja is a bit of a tease isn't he? he's a silicon tease i tell you <laughs> it's a very cool image of him holding G dg2 and rather tellingly it also states that it's 512 which seemingly confirms that well it's got 512 execution units which again means 4096 shaders this has been pretty well established at this point that those specifications are true along with 16 gigabytes of memory but Raja and other Intel employees were then talking and kind of you know, teasing the public that currently the main focus of uh, Intel's you know labors are basically in software and this is actually what we've been saying for a while that the actual hardware itself seems to be pretty decent it's really the drivers and software optimization because you have to remember that they don't really have a large basis to work from. Yes, Lisa Pierce and her team have certainly done a pretty decent job in terms of like, you know, iGPUs and stuff. And I argue that their work on the Intel control panel um, is actually pretty good. But there's a hell of a lot of difference between trying to fill up, let's say, you know, a few hundred shaders worth of work versus thousands, several thousands. And yeah, there's a lot of optimization. Plus as well, it is also sporting new features like hardware-based ray tracing, which Raja again has uh, leaked out along with variable rate shading. And it probably makes you coffee in the morning if you ask it nicely. I must say that Intel releasing a product which offers, you know, the, the rumor that a lot of us have been saying, you know, I, I mentioned it multiple times, even late last year, was that it was like 3070 levels of performance to maybe 3080. I suspect that this is a guess, but I suspect that this is going to be an architecture which releases, which does really well in certain games, but not so well in others. That is not a leak. That's just what I'm hearing and speculation. I would love to be proven wrong there. I'd like for it to be uniform across the board. But I do suspect certain game engines will scale really well with this. Either way, back to the point. I think Intel, um, you know, it's kind of a shame that DG2 is not available right now. Not only because of shortages, but, you know, um, 
I reviewed the RTX 3080 Ti and the reviews up today it's kind of one of the reasons I'm looking a bit shattered because I didn't sleep uh, great last night I had to be up this morning really early to uh, kind of do filming and stuff and uh, you know it's an amazing graphics card it really is it's just really expensive and AMD too they've been pushing out cards like the 6900 uh, XT you know they're starting to fill out the lower end SKUs like now we've got the 6700 which is again a great card I'm not disparaging the lineup rdna2 is amazing yada 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 but i do really wish that the 3050 for example was out that the 60 i don't know the 6500 was available and these cards which to be honest with you i feel that the market would really crave right now you know there's definitely a it's definitely a, a uh what's the word uh it's definitely a cavity in the market, like a hole in the market that's just not being filled. And of course, you can buy older SKUs, but yeah, it just kind of feels like the market really needs this. And obviously, there is silicon shortages. And, you know, at the end of the day, all of this is coming from the same fabs. And um, yeah, there is that, of course, to it. And the problem with the, the lower end of SKUs, like for example, cards which are like two, three hundred bucks, is that it does increase um, sales, which I know that might sound really stupid as a negative, but you have to remember that those cards will be really high volume cards. So if you're selling, for example, an RTX 3080, you're gonna sell more of those cards than the RTX 3080 Ti. Let's just assume market conditions were normal for a second, right? will add the complexity of the market right now but let's say you've got the regular market conditions you're going to sell more 3080s than the 3080 ti and more 3080 ti's than the 3090s and the same thing of course has been said for amd's older products as well like the rx 470 was really popular the 570 was really popular vega 56s that's not to say that they didn't sell these higher end cards like the gtx 1080 ti was really popular but I still think the most popular uh, card on Steam, I might be wrong, but I believe the most popular card on Steam right now is like from NVIDIA, like the, yeah, it is, it's the 1060 because uh, AMD used it for the FSR. Yeah, it is the 1060. So it's like those kind of cards, you know, people are gonna buy in volume. I, I, I'm kind of rambling at this point, so I apologize. This is what you get when I'm, this is tired, Paul. This is what you get, you get rambly, Paul. It's like, you know, they kind of are synergistic. Um, but yeah, I guess what I'm trying to say is that if the rumours that I've been hearing about in, uh, Intel pushing these products out and really targeting the 200 300 US dollar segment, I don't know if those are the highest end SKUs, but those seem to be the ones that Intel are really going to be pushing with its marketing from what I'm hearing. That would be amazing. Like, okay, I'll take that. I'll take that all day long. Thank you, Mr. Raja. I will shake your hand and buy you... I don't know what Raja likes. I'll, I, I don't know. I'll buy him an orange juice. I don't know what he wants, but I'll, I'll buy him an orange juice or something. But seriously, I would be so damn happy with that right now. So it's going to be very interesting when uh, Intel can get their, you know, axe together. I was about to say, yeah, when they can get their ass together. That was a terrible, I don't know. Uh, again, tired Paul. But yeah, when they can get their ass together. That's quotable, I suppose. When they can get that ass together and they can release this thing, I'm going to be really excited because I feel right now, gosh darn it, I want those lower end SKUs in the marketplace. I'm going to go now because I think I'm not doing so well with the with the uh, keeping it together with the tiredness. It's a bit of thing. All right, thanks guys. If you've enjoyed the video, you know what to do. You know, click the likey button and the subscribe thing, and I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.